Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another NBA 2K17 Pro AM game where our opponent's gonna dribble himself straight into a turnover to start things off and we're gonna convert it into a Walsh layup on the other end. These guys, the Avenger, their squad entered in with a pretty good record, 15-2 and two. and with us being a bronze team or amateur team, whatever you want to call it, we haven't really found teams with that good of a record. Normally it's just like some not so good team will blow them out but these guys guys had a good record so it should make for a good game as we get a turnover on the inbound pass right there and they're gonna get a dunk out of that mess not much we could really do about that so that's the first thing to know about this game the second thing is we get screened to IL right there and it's gonna result in a jumper from the point guard the second thing to know is that the lineup that we're running is interesting to say the least so we got myself at the point guard well we got bees at the shooting guard with his sharpshooter his normal character then you got nick at the small forward he's got a sharpshooter as well then walsh is at the power forward spot with a small forward defensive stopper which is where things get kind of weird and then walsh is at the or brian's at the five with his usual glass cleaner but um some lineups in the pro-am work very well they mesh right away offensively they click defensively you're getting stops out there and you can just you know put up a ton of points and win by 30. some lineups well, they don't work, to put it kindly as we go inside and find Brian, and early on in this game, this lineup could not find its footing offensively or defensively, and as a result, we find ourselves down quite a bit as Brian not able to find anything inside, and the main problem for us was force spacing offensively, where with this lineup, we had two sharpshooters and myself, you know, that kind of works okay, but then Walsh's defensive stopper couldn't really find his way into the game. He's just dribbling in the paint right there, and he's going to eventually put up a shot that does not go in, and now here they come running. They got a three-on-two if their guy ever passed the ball, but he never did, but he nonetheless throw the ball inside and get a bucket from their center, and we find ourselves down nine late in the first bees with the ill-advised shot falling down, and here they go back to running a man ahead of the pack, trying to do what we can to stop it, and we do but they get the rebound get blocked and uh, we have a disaster right there but nonetheless we find ourselves down nine and the most troubling statistic is we find ourselves on pace to score 32 points which is absolutely terrible in a pro game if you didn't know is this guy trying to dribble inside a little bit careless but they're gonna get a slam dunk out of it nonetheless so I mentioned before the main key to this lineup is Walsh's defensive stopper and I'll tell you two two things about Walsh right one he might be my favorite person to play with in the Pro-Am because he's probably the most selfless person I play in the Pro-Am pro with. And that's very hard to find, very hard to do because after a while, especially in a video game, everyone's looking to get their stats. There's just no doubts about that one. But Walsh is probably the only guy that I play with that would not could give two dams about what his stat line is at the end of the game as long as we win and um even myself i feel like you know something I'm like damn i'm not really doing that well like i need the ball right here but well it's just he just chills man he just doesn't call for the ball excessively unless he's wide open which anyone should do if they're wide open he just chills out and that's really cool to play with walsh because um you know, it creates a chill atmosphere and a winning atmosphere. So, you know, that works out. But the other thing about Walsh is that he can be very frustrating to play with for two reasons. One, defensively, sometimes he just, it, it feels like he is trying to point shave. Where he's just like, his dude's getting wide open threes left and right. Next thing you know, the guy Walsh is going against has got 30 on him. And just like, come on, man. We know you can play defensively better than that. As we go inside the Brian, he's going to get the slam dunk right here. As they're trying to get on a little bit of a run late in this second quarter. And it's going to be end up a three-pointer for us wide open but unfortunately our dude can't really shoot and we get a c-rated shot and it does not go in but um the second thing to know about walsh is that sometimes on offense he just runs around the court I, I couldn't tell you what he's doing no one not even walsh can tell you what he's doing offensively and it creates four spacing that's questionable to say the least and now at halftime we have 20 points we're on pace to score more than 32 points at the end of this game but unfortunately we're on pace to score 40 which is still awful in the pro if you didn't know as we are trying to create a turnover but we're actually going to create an open shot for the shooting guard to beat the shot clock that cashes in so all of that just you know it can be very frustrating but at the end of the day, I like playing with Walsh as they get a slam dunk from their shooting guard. who's starting to take over this game a little bit. We got to find a way to slow him down. We send like two or three people at him. And um, yeah, so all in all, that's the little scouting report in this game. It was a little bit of the um, not so good force spacing side of Walsh. But also, the selflessness helped us, you know, chip at this game. And make sure we didn't fall apart or anything like that. And, you know, try to continue finding something that would work offensively. Meanwhile, defensively, we got to pull it together right now. Because they're starting to get some easy buckets. As we're going to get one of our own via a cut from the man we've been talking about, Walsh. Now, the one thing that we have not been able to do is get the outside shot going. We have two sharpshooters, but we haven't really been able to find a way to get them open. And like I mentioned before, some that has to do with the 
Four spacing as Walsh gets denied. Trying to go up with that dunk. Nick frantically trying to hand off the ball. And we get an offensive three. Now, it's kind of the story of our game. We just could not find anything to stick offensively. And then there's, you know, offensive threes. Brian ended up taking a lot of shots in the first three quarters. More than maybe even he wanted to take. And we get blocked. But Brian's there to clean up our mess. So, as we continue to find those things, the one thing we are doing decent defensively is keeping the point guard in check. As you guys might be able to notice, this guy was... Oh, you can tell from the very first clip in the game. This guy, which is all about putting on dribble moves. Going behind the back. Going, you know, step back. All these different moves. He was over dribbling the basketball. And you'll find that a lot in the program. Some of these guys just... You know, they're looking to break angles out here. But they're not necessarily looking to make a play happen when someone's cutting to the rim. And they're too busy hitting that step back or something like that. This guy was definitely one of those guys. So, all we had to do was keep him in check. Make sure he didn't get drives to the rim. And we were doing a very good job of that. He was pretty much limited throughout the game. As we are down by 11 right now. They're running. They're pushing the pace and once again look at this guy he's over dribbling over dribbling the one thing we can't do is give up wide open cuts and we ended up giving up one right there and that was one thing that was definitely killing us in this oh, man, third quarter i mentioned before they were getting really easy buckets as brian's not able to get one right there shot gets blocked they're running we find ourselves in a very bad predicament as that guy somehow makes that shot right there i don't know that shooting guard was just feeling it throughout the game he was putting up damn near anything in the paint and getting it to go as we find bees in the corner and he's able to knock down a Badly needed three. And I mentioned before, the one thing we haven't been able to do is get shooting from beyond the arc. And maybe more bees, we can find that. Maybe even with Nick. He's wide open. That's a three. That is no good. And shots like that, when you're down as much as we are in this game, those, those gotta fall down right there. Those are killers when they don't, because that's just an easy opportunity as Brian's gonna miss that shot inside to start the fourth quarter and get a little bit of a frustration foul as we just cannot find the right formula. These guys are playing pretty good defensively well enough to, you know, confuse us, get us the bad force spacing and all that. And now we find ourselves down 15 in the fourth quarter. And one thing you'll know is that we have not even scored yet in this game. We have zero points. Part of that because I can't really find any driving lanes or anything like that as we get the open three. And just like that, we got our first point on the board. And now that we got the open three to fall down, maybe that opens up the four for everyone else a little bit. If they start respecting our shot a little bit, maybe we can find Nick or find B's outside as they are going to lose the ball right here. Brian going to pick it up. We got a man ahead of the pack, but we can't really force it. But what we are going to do is find B's for three. Bang! And the lead is cut down to seven. We chopped it down in half in less than two minutes. And we are on pace to eventually chop this lead down all the way and win the game. And we continue with this pace. The defense is doing good. The offense is doing great because we're finding bees fading away for three and it's a four point game and right now it's all on our shooting guard to carry us back into this game as they take a not so great shot brian on the rebound you know who we're looking for bees for three bang one point game the men we got two gunners on this team i mentioned before we call up gunner up Bees is also Gunner Bees. They're the Gunner Brothers. And right now, Gunner Bees is carrying the squad. Is unfortunately an end of the shot clock. Malfunction on defense is going to get them an easy bucket. But nonetheless, a chance to tie the game right here. You know we're looking for Bees. But Walsh, unfortunately, dribbling inside. Loses the ball. They're running up ahead. Got a man. Got a slam dunk. And now all of our efforts to get back in these games are starting to fall to the wayside. They're starting to cover Bees. Now we got to find a secondary option. And thankfully, Brian the man right there and we needed that bucket just you know one defensive stop now now that we got that bucket one defensive stop and that is not gonna be it that is a defensive three second violation that's a free throw for them which they convert and that's a free point and that you know in a close game you cannot be giving up three points see once again this guy continues to over dribble the basketball and they put are not able to get the three point to go i think it was kind of open now what are we doing we're still looking for bees the ball's gonna move around but look who's open bees for three again this man is unconscious the ball has to find them every possession if we want to have a chance in this one look who that oh bees is covered right now but we take it ourselves to the rim and hey they're looking at bees they're looking at brian so we gotta take that shot every once in a while it's like you know what this is my time man i haven't taken one drive to the rim this is it as they are gonna turn the ball over they had their center inside to try to give them the lead instead here we go to the free throw line with a perfect release on the first one the second one will still make it a one possession game if we make it and we do with that 99 free throw rating at this point they don't need the three pointer it would have been very wise for him to call a timeout to try to go two for one instead to kind of slow it down as you know they're definitely gonna be looking for a three pointer at this point that's what people will do a lot of 
of times. You can't take it to the rim, but this guy's trying to dribble the ball around, and this is playing to our hand. Go inside, take the layup. He doesn't even take it, though. That would have been very smart for him to take it, but instead, they get an offensive three. Now, just a badly mishandled possession. They didn't really come in with much, much of a game plan besides their point guard trying to dribble something open. And now, very fittingly, we send Bees to the line to try to close the game out, and this guy will not miss a shot. Not even the free throws. He's got both of them to go down. He's got, what, 11, 12, maybe 13 points in this fourth quarter as we get slammed to the ground, but he misses the shot anyways, and we're going to dribble the clock out and take our victory. We found ourselves down 15 points in this fourth quarter until Bees... Well, he just went out worldly with that performance. He's definitely the player of the game in this one. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Pro-Am games, 2K17, and Madden as well if you're here for that. Subscribe for more NBA 2K. Oh, I just said that. But I'm, I'll catch you guys next time for the next Pro-Am game.